I preach on redemption all the time. It means brought back to original value. Brought back to original value. God wants to bring you through the blood to Adam before the tree. That's why Jesus raised from the dead in John 20 and breathed on his disciples because he just went to the Father and put his blood on the mercy seat. So now the blood is speaking better things and there's mercy towards man and he just was the lamb that took uh, away the sin of the world. So when he came into the room that evening, he said, don't cling to me, Mary. I didn't ascend yet. I have to send to my father. He's my father. He's your father. He's my God. He's your God. Go tell my brother and not my two-faced, low-life traitor. Go tell my brother and what's he saying? I haven't changed my mind about any of those guys. I got to go to the Father. I'll be back. Tell him I'm coming. What was he doing? Hebrews 9. He was going to take his own blood into the mercy seat and be a high priest between God and men. So he put his blood on the mercy seat. You know he did because Romans 5.1, you have peace with God through the Lord Jesus Christ. He came and when he walked in the room, they're in fear, fear of the Jews. He just walks in the room and says, peace to you. Why? His blood's speaking now. And they have peace with God. So he announced it. Peace to you. He showed him his hands, he showed him his side, and they were glad when they saw it was the Lord. The very next thing he said, peace to you. It's a different peace than the first peace. The first peace was the peace I made between you and God. You have peace with God through the Lord Jesus Christ. The second peace is when they realized it was him, what happened in their soul immediately? Oh my gosh, we betrayed him. Oh my gosh, we sinned. Oh my gosh, we didn't stand. Oh my gosh, we scattered. Would you agree? Come on, they pull up a net full of fish and Peter falls on his knees and says, depart from me, I'm a sinful man. What do you think happened now that Jesus is standing right in front of them and they all scattered? When they realized it was him, their souls went, oops. And Jesus is so amazing. He said, peace to you. As the Father sent me. He said this to the guys that did do nothing right. As the Father sent me. So I send you. Genesis 1.26, let us make man in our... And in verse 27, so God made man. John chapter 20, as the Father sent me, sound like image? So I send, for God so... So I sin, and then he, and said, receive, Holy Spirit. Why? Because when Adam sinned, that all died. Jesus' blood speaking better things. Genesis 1, all over again. As if sin never happened. And here we are still fighting sin instead of living the good fight of faith. Here's what I learned in my life. I get emails, I get testimonies that just make me cry all the time. I just got one late spring. We did a baptism at a recovery house on the shores and beaches of Florida. And the girl came up to me and says, if I'm hearing you right, you're telling me that God can take AIDS out of me. I said, honey, he raised Jesus from the dead. He breathed into dirt and a man stood up. <laughs> yes, he can take AIDS out of you. I said, how'd you get HIV? She said, prostitution and drug addiction. I said, are you a prostitute anymore? No. Are you a drug addict? No. You born again? Yeah. Well, then you're a new creation. Old things passed away. Behold, all things become new. So if you could go back and change your life and rewrite the pages, would you? Yes, of course. What kind of question is that? A question hoping to get that answer. So I'm not even talking to the girl that you're talking about. I'm talking to somebody new. So if mercy triumphs over judgment and God won't judge you for where you've been, then why is where you've been judging you? Maybe we need to tell it to leave. She fell on me and started crying, and I rocked her. Thank you for freedom, God. I didn't say, Father, I thank you right now. Fire of God. Age, you come out. 
Father, just thank you for your unstoppable love. Seeing a girl for who she's become and not where she's been, where your son has been is where you find her. Simple stuff like that, guys. Thank you. That was late October. I see her in January. She comes running to me with papers. Her last visit, because she's on the HIV government list. Quarterly exams. She owes the paper undetectable. <laughs> Emails me in March, January, February, March. Three undetectables, three negatives, and you're wiped off the list. Yeah. <laughs> so guess what the email said in March? Completely gone. Why? That's not who she is. She's a new creation. Old things passed away. Behold all things. Well, brother, she made her bed. There's consequences. You got to... No, no, no. He made your bed. You probably ought to get in it. There's nice clean sheets. Well, I don't believe that. I understand there's a lot of unbelief in the body of Christ. So I'm not even going to try to combat that because there's no explanation good enough for unbelief. But faith doesn't need one. I'd rather live in faith. It is miserable and wretched to live in unbelief. The Bible calls it evil and wicked. Well, I don't believe that. Well, do you have documentation? Well, I need to see her papers. Why? You'll say, how do you know that's her papers? And unbelief is never satisfied because it's wretched and enmity to your created value. Total perversion. Unbelief. Total perversion. How's that for straight? I said that gentle with a smile. 